Ozuma what could have been. It was a Saturday afternoon. I was a young boy at the time, and I was observing my mother doing a daily tradition of playing pop cap games. Plants vs. Zombies, Peggle, Bejeweled, all such timeless classics, each one I hold a fond memory of. However, there was that one. One seemingly all the talk and at the same time not. Everything was there for it to prosper. The fans, the reviews, okay maybe not that one, the simple but charming graphics, and most importantly, that satisfying and addicting gameplay loop. Zuma used to be the big talk in town, but nobody cares now. It's almost been seven years since their absence from the spotlight. Pity. Some say they caught a train to the next town over. Others say Zuma is dead, and the homeless guy outside of my office said they returned to their home planet in a UFO made out of ancient Zumanian technology. But that's not a good enough answer for me. I need to find the real reason why it's gone, and I will keep looking for them, even if it's the last thing I do. So will you join me in my quest to find Zuma? No? Haha, ha, you're funny. That was a rhetorical question, by the way. There's no way out. Now that's all settled. Let's begin. Zuma is a collection of casual shooting based match 3 puzzle games created by PopCap Games, the same company behind the before mentioned classics. And then they made Plants vs. Zombies 2 to where all basically went to shit. The three games being Zuma Deluxe, the OG, Zuma's Revenge, the sequel, and Zuma Blitz, the Facebook one, because PopCap really loved to making all those Facebook exclusive games for some reason. So after some quick purchases on Steam for both games and installing them, I was finally ready to re-experience my childhood memories and hopefully find an answer. Let's go in chronological order and start with Zuma Deluxe, and I'll be entirely talking about the main part of this game, Adventure Mode, mostly because Gauntlet Mode is pretty boring. So anyways, let's just hit the play button. Immediately, you are dared with the most thought-provoking question of all time. Do you enter the ancient ruins? I mean, it looks like it's on fire and entering will surely spell my demise, but to hell with it, I got some memories to relive. So after a tutorial screen which explains the absolute bare minimum you need to know about the game you are thrown into the first level. The gameplay here is like any other peak pop cap game, simple but amazing. Something about a match 3 puzzle game with the added element of trying to precisely shoot marbles in the correct spots in order to win, it just clicks in my caveman brain so incredibly well. And the sound design in this game is just magnificent, 10 out of 10 the sounds of the marbles hitting one another and when they explode, especially when you trigger a chain reaction, is just perfection. It's like the ninth wonder of the world, because I'm the eighth, fuck you. There are four power-ups you can get that either increase your accuracy, stall the chain by reversing or slowing them down, and the last one is an explosion so powerful it deletes the marbles off your computer. If you don't get one fast enough, it can revert to being a regular marble again, which always always seems to go away right when I'm about to get one. Like, this was actually frames off, what the fuck? By looking at the yellow bar at the top of your screen, you can see how long this wave of marbles will last for. Collecting coins or getting epic trick shots by shooting through gaps within the chain or destroying a lot in quick succession can fill up the bar faster. These also contribute to your points, which are not just to show off and beat the little easiest fake high scores I've ever seen in a video game. Like, what the honest to god fuck were you doing, John, to only score 1,000 points and then lose? You can get that much in less than 8 seconds. And you want to get those points, not only to flex on the two other people who care about Zuma still, but for the extra lives it gives you, which is every 50,000. All of these mechanics work really well together. It's fun just trying to beat a level as fast as possible while also getting rewarded with a higher score and extra lives. This is all benefited by the amount of 
of charm in this game. Even if it's very simplistic, it's fun just to see a frog who looks like he's made out of stone shoot marbles to destroy other marbles to earn enough points to get more lives, which are clearly not stone frogs. Uh, that's confusing. Also, are these supposed to be skulls? Because they look more like those Cinnamon Toast Crunch guys. And yeah, now looking at these graphics, they are pretty dated. Not to the fault of the game, because it was made in the ancient times of 2003 BC. But can I ask one question? Who made some of these backgrounds for levels? Like some of these are actually pretty pleasing to look at, but then we have something like this or this absolutely repulsive one. Like what was the reference photo behind this? Actually, I don't want to know because it looks like the level is a breeding ground for microbial life. Now let's address probably the biggest frog offense in the room, the difficulty. I originally went in with the expectations of this game's difficulty being like any other old pop cap game. Like, yeah, Peggle isn't really a hard game at all. It's just tedious if you want to 100% it. And Plants vs. Zombies can be hard if you're like fucking lobotomized or something. But Zuma, on the other hand? Oh my zooming god! This game is so unbelievably difficult and luck dependent. I'm saying this and I've 100% the Binding of Isaac, which is the epitome of a game that is both extremely challenging and luck dependent. If I were to explain my experience with this game as simply as possible, it would be this one image. Here, let me elaborate. On the bottom are the 13 stages that you play through, and on the left is the difficulty of said stages. And as you can see, the chart tends to spike pretty highly in some areas. The first four stages are a cakewalk, even with stage four introducing a new color. And now, not to brag or anything, but I beat all of them without losing a single life. Yeah, you don't need to tell me twice that I'm the Zuma god. But then stage 5 happened. This was the first taste of difficulty. It went so poorly that I survived on my last life. And stage 6 is when I first lost. But hey, I'm still enjoying myself. I'm still the Zuma god after all. You gotta lose at some point, right? So after a few more attempts, I conquered it. And with stage 7 in view, I asked myself, what could possibly go wrong now? Oh, stage Stage 7. This is where the game takes an absolutely massive spike in difficulty. The skill, timing, and luck needed for these levels is way more brutal than what you would expect for a game that looks like this. But eventually, I was able to beat Stage 7. Hooray, it's time to celebrate! Just kidding, there's no time to party, everyone get out! Because I was just told that this game takes around 4 to 6 hours to beat normally, which is the biggest fucking lie I've ever heard. Because I I have 8 hours on this game already and half of that time was spent trying to beat this one stage. And thankfully, stage 8 is even more arduous than the last one and now I'm heavily regretting my decisions to relive a childhood memory that I barely remember. But I persisted and my reward for doing so was stage 9. Worst birthday gift ever. The only thing that kept me barely entertained by this point was that when you lose, the frog looks like it's a boss from Terraria. But in the words of Sun Tzu, I don't know what he says, but I beat stage 9 and stage 10 and 11 went completely fine and were actually fair to play. Wow, maybe this birthday party isn't so bad after all. But then stage 12 happened. Oh my fucking Zuma. This completely sadistic and cruel invention by mankind. This made me lose so much of my time that- wait, where did everybody go? This is like stages 7 to 9 but tenfold. It is so painfully laborious to play through this that it isn't even fun anymore because oh my god these underground sections why do you have what is essentially an invincible fast pass to your exit and please just add at least one other song so I don't have to listen to this for hours on end the charm for this game has worn off honest criticism is hard to take particularly from a relative a friend an acquaintance or a stranger hey you want some honest criticism your game fucking sucks I have spent so much time on this stage without any meaningful results. The farthest I have ever gotten was 12-7, one away from reaching 13-1, the final level, which is in space now because why not at this point? Where am I? 
Man, my obituary is gonna be so embarrassing. Oh, hey, there's Satan. Uh, hey, Satan. Well, um, uh, hey, uh, um, hey, Johnny. Johnny, Johnny, how did you get that wrong? Okay, Jerome, it seems like not only did you play over the government-issued amount of time to play Zuma Deluxe in one session without developing a sinus infection, which is two hours, and you played for 69. Wait, that doesn't sound that bad at all. A little sinus infection won't kill ya. And oh yeah, the pain that you felt upon the game having a good concept but ultimately being ruined by the great spikes in difficulty was too much for your heart to handle, so it literally shattered. Like, your heart is fucked up, dude. Man, I didn't know I was that much of a little bitch. Yeah, you're a little bitch. What was that for? You died from playing a video game, you fucking loser. Okay, can I, like, reverse that, though? Like, undie? Hmm, I suppose I've been being a bit cruel. Find out why Zuma isn't relevant anymore, and I might send you back to the living. Start your journey here. And how am I supposed to do that? Oh, th thanks. Anyways, thanks, Satan. Yeah, I see you, Aaron. Huh, Zuma's revenge? Revenge on who? Stage 12? Man, that was intense. I almost felt an emotion there. I don't know how, but this game looks even crispier than the last one. The game opens up with a cutscene of our protagonist, Frog Person Frog, crash landing onto an island with her flimsy ass bamboo raft with a logo of a company I don't recognize when suddenly the most generic villain character I've ever seen in my life appears and says, Strange Frog, why do you intrude on us? Bro, I was just on a raft after finally getting enough materials to escape the last game and now this is the kind of hospitality I'm getting treated to? Okay, bring it on. I will face all of your chiefs. Oh wait, the game froze. Yeah, apparently just tabby now at all freezes the game. That's cool. So after a quick relaunch and messing with some of the game files in order to make the high res option work and vowing to never alt tab while playing again, this game is actually incredible, it's amazing. The theming of this game is already way better with you on an island and actually having backgrounds that represent that is a huge step up. Like these are so beautiful, god tier stuff. The game starts off with a short tutorial, which is way better than this joke of a tutorial in Deluxe. Like I did not know what this bar did until I looked it up. I might be stupid for that, but whatever. Another really cool feature is a crosshair that changes is color based on the marble that you have equipped. Whoever came up with this is a genius because the game feels way better to play now. The game also introduces some more gameplay mechanics like three new power-ups, one that destroys all of a single color marble on the track, a laser that can delete one ball at a time, and a big fucking cannon that literally shreds through everything. There are now some new level mechanics like lily pads that change your position and a slider stolen straight from Luxor. And and oh yeah, the coins have been replaced by spinning 3D models of fruit now for some reason. After every level, you get to see how many more levels are left before you face the boss. These guys are my favorite feature in this game, even from this menu screen. They give a lot of personality and charm by either saying hints on how to beat them, or just the stupidest shit. The fights themselves are really fun to play as well. You just try to break through the chain to get as much damage in on the boss as possible before the chain reconnects while trying not to get hit by the boss's own projectiles and lose at the same time. Hey guys. I just love how these guys are portrayed to be brutal killers, but they get cast in bandages whenever they lose. I swear, this game can get an award for how intimidating and unabashedly goofy these guys are at the same time. It's amazing. After each boss fight, you unlock more of the island, going further and further in each time. Other than that one part where you take a quick detour to go underwater. Eh, you're a frog, you probably will be fine. Uga with a hell 
helping of Booga Sauce. I want that shit on my tombstone. That goes hard. Also, this game has more than one track, so I can listen to something actually bearable for once. Bearable is an understatement. This game's music is actually very nice. I just love the touch of adding ocean sounds and whale cries to the underwater levels. The ball leaving behind this trail of water and the slight heat distortion effect in the volcano levels is good attention to detail. And also, it's the location of the final stage of the game and contains one of my favorite final bosses in any game just ever. So after a super intimidating intro to the boss, Zaka Mu, Ultimate Devil Spirit. He is so scary that this guy literally froze in place in fear. We are told to extinguish four torches since the boss will only reveal himself in darkness. And afterwards, the main antagonist of this game will finally reveal his true form. Oh wait, he doesn't look like an Ultimate Devil Spirit. Who knows, maybe chickens are literally the most wicked and corrupt beings on this island. He has a lot of health, so maybe he is. Huh, that was, uh, something. But hey, I won! I beat a Zuma game! Hey, Satan, take that, you! Oh wait, that was all fake. Oh shit, this guy looks terrifying as fuck. How many games have actually done this sort of bait and switch like this before? Seriously, how many? I need to know. This really shows how much passion the developers put into this game to have a twist like this. It's just so funny and unexpected. It sort of breaks the fourth wall in a way as well. The entire build up to this was so smartly done, it's genius. Eventually, he turns into his truer form. Now, if I'm being honest, if I played this game when I was a kid, I would have fucking nightmares about this. After you defeat him, it's still not over yet because now you have to face off against an evil version of yourself as the final, final boss. I never would have expected this sort of originality from a Zuma game. After defeating him, he reveals that we're an endangered species. Wait, what the fuck? I'm an endangered species? Some wildlife conservationist you guys are. Oh, never mind, it all makes sense now. There's two of us. So that means if I would have died, the species wouldn't have gone extinct. Flawless thinking. You can kill how many animals of a species you want as long as you leave at least one. And you can trust me because before my detective job, I was a wildlife conservationist for around seven seconds. What were we doing again? Oh yeah, the credits. These credits are just simply incredible. It has photographs of everyone just chilling together and being bros. And that's it, we beat the game. Otherwise, if you want to play through the three new modes, Iron Frog, Heroic Frog, and Challenge. Iron Frog is a gauntlet of 10 difficult stages that you have to beat with only one life. And yeah, I'm not that good at this. Heroic Frog is a harder version of adventure mode, and if you do decide to play, the bosses actually have new dialogue. I fucking love this game. And challenge mode is a race to collect as many trophies and points in the least amount of time possible. They also decided to not bring back gauntlet mode from Deluxe. Wait, I never explained what gauntlet mode was? Fun fact, I don't know how to write a script at all. I just mash words together until they make a somewhat cohesive mound of garbage. Gauntlet is just an infinite survival mode with a weird menu. Yep, that's it. You weren't missing out on too much. What I like about these separate ways of playing is that it allows for people to play how they want. And for a casual game made for general audiences, you would want anyone from a hardcore game 
somewhere to your fucking paraplegic grandma to play and have a good time. Unlike in Deluxe, where it's, fuck you, grandma, since you can't keep up with the game's random spikes in difficulty, I guess you can't play the game anymore and you'll be stuck with gauntlet mode for the rest of your days. Anyways, this brings me to my biggest point about all of this, which is, Zuma's Revenge is a perfect sequel in every aspect. It's not the average run-of-the-mill sequel where the graphics are improved at the cost of what literally made the game good in the first place. Nah, man, Revenge is packed with personality and content. From the zany bosses, new power-ups, and gameplay mechanics, to the greeting cards that introduce you to new areas, to the amount of faces that are hidden around the game. Like, holy shit, the artist had a field day with this. It's like a Where's Waldo book up in here. To the four different ways of playing the game, and the very detailed stats board of each mode, and to the 14 achievements with one of them being a reference to the I heard you like Mudkip's meme for some reason, this game is just a complete package. So fucking good. And oh yeah, I'm not even playing the best version of this game. Surprising, right? Because the Xbox 360 has even better graphics and even more features. Please play this game. It's a pop cap classic. Alright, that's enough gushing about the game from me. Let's talk about something else now. A part of the reason why I went so hard on Deluxe is that not only did it heavily disappoint me and also kill me, but I want to use that as a way to show how much Revenge raised the bar. Deluxe is still a good game despite everything I've said about it, but this left me wondering, why didn't they continue making any more games after Revenge? Well, they kinda did. In 2009, AT&T released a Flash game called Zuma's High Speed Challenge. This game almost looks identical to Revenge but with a watermark now? Why was this made again? And the other game is Zuma Blitz, a Facebook exclusive which ran from 2010 to 2017. The game consists of competing against your Facebook friends by trying to get the most points in one minute intervals, to which you can earn XP points by doing this. And as a result, you unlock power-ups such as an end of the round blast or starting score multiplier that can be purchased using mojo. This game's form of currency. Yes, that means this game has microtransactions. Despite this, I've heard that the game was not that intrusive in trying to shill to you their product. It did, however, have a life mechanic, meaning you are limited in how long you play for one session. But still, the game was fun and well received overall. Now, this is going to be entering speculative territory because now I have to answer the simple question, why isn't Zuma mainstream or relevant today? Well, let's take a look at who was developing these games. PopCap. They used to make some of the best casual games the world has ever seen. These games are a part of so many people's childhoods and fond memories. But in 2010, this changed as they were preparing itself to be salty a, the culture of the company was shifting from one that used to take their time and tried to put fun and personality into every nook and cranny, to one that was seeing how much they could replicate the success of games like Bejeweled Blitz, a mobile game. In 2011, the deal went through. EA bought out PopCap for $750 million. Now, I'm not going to blame anyone at PopCap for choosing this decision. Money is the most tempting thing in the world, after all. Still, it is a sad fate for the company, well at least for the consumers and probably not EA or PopCap. They had their eyes on Zuma and after seeing the success of Blitz, thought it would be time to port revenge to mobile. It costed two bucks with no ads or microtransactions. Wait, this doesn't sound like the EA I know. They would never do that nowadays. And yeah, you're right because they learned from their mistake. Only two years later, EA announced that Zuma's revenge would be leaving the app store forever, and three years later, Zuma Blitz would be shut down permanently, and this was the last ever Zuma game. So to answer the question, why isn't Zuma mainstream or relevant today, well, 
isn't it pretty obvious? The game stopped being profitable, simple as that. I originally thought that there had to be some secret to uncover, a mystery behind the disappearance, but I was blinded by my hubris until now. It's an unjust tragedy of what happened to Zuma. This entire world abandoned due to not meeting profit margins of a multi-billion dollar company. And nowadays, it's being buried underneath several different things also called Zuma. And you want to know what's the saddest thing? All of this just happens to be coincidental, but now take a look at this, and this, and this, and this, and this. And this fucking game is actually called Atlantisaur, but is only using this name for clickbait and also mocks the original. Just incredible. There is still clearly an audience for this game, and some of these knockoffs are actually highly rated as well. Just imagine how much higher an official one could have with the EA brand name alone, but EA just doesn't want to. Zuma's mostly forgotten and it doesn't seem like anything can bring it back at this point. In Plants vs. Zombies 3, there's an area called Tropical Caven. Within this are ancient statues with references to the PVZ franchise. You might be wondering, why do I bring this up then? Well, because it doesn't just reference PVZ. Yep, there they are, a literal distant memory just sitting there, in a franchise that has over 20 plus games in it and isn't forgotten in the slightest. But wait, maybe I've had the wrong perspective on all of this. Is it always good to not be forgotten? Let's use the example of the PVZ and Zuma franchise for this. Yeah, sure, Zuma is cancelled and forgotten about, and PVZ still getting new games made while maintaining a good amount of its popularity today. But is this situation always bad and this situation always good? In my opinion, it's not. Not even in the slightest. Because in my mind, Zuma's the last one laughing. It essentially ended at its peak while PVZ will keep getting milked until the heat death of the universe, while almost consistently having the quality of the games go down with every new release, just because there's still some interest in it and money to be made. And in today's times, God, it really feels like the pieces of media that keep going on forever will almost always lose lose what made them special in the first place. All for the sake of appealing to the most people. All for the sake of maximizing profit so that you'll squeeze out that last penny. All for the simple sake of greed. The chances of a remake or sequel of something you love just being okay or not how you remembered or even just complete shit is way too high to truly get hyped about them. So the actual good pieces of media that have escaped this cycle of being rezombified for the rest of eternity is something really worth celebrating nowadays. They have cheated death of being nothing more than a cog in some billionaire's pocket. And Little did everyone know, a small game series made by PopCap did as well that day. It broke the chains that EA placed on it. It might have been through the most drawn out and boring way possible, but by god it did it. It got its revenge on EA and the entire media industry, and that's fucking glorious. So go play through the Zuma games, have fun, rage, laugh, and relive your childhood memories, because there will be nothing else quite like Zuma. Thanks for watching. Hey, uh, Satan? Oh yeah, what's up, Paul? Can I go home now? I kinda did what you wanted me to. Hmm, let me think about it for another couple hundred years. Why?